He said, go to his arm, or the people said, Sheriff, go take their guns away. And we give the, uh, the sheriff one hour to do that. And he didn't do that. And we give him another 15 minutes, and they didn't do that. And we give him another uh, five minutes, and they didn't do that. And we had asked the media to bring this information back. Tell us what the sheriff is uh, doing, and what is the sheriff, is the sheriff uh, uh, taking those arms back? And we asked that, that he bring take those arms back, which is about three miles away, well, about five miles away from where we were, and bring those arms and put them under the flags where we were, st- where we were all congregated. They didn't do that. They did not do that. The media did not give us a report. We had a you know a thousand people there and uh, it was fifty sixty horses up on the hill, and uh, I they and then they nothing was said about the cattle. This whole thing was not about cattle. Uh, it was about the people's rights and their liberty and their freedom. And they was mad about. The First Amendment rights only in these little pig. Pens. I understand the cattle were basically like taking the flag back, and and, yeah, and that's... the cattle, mm. the cattle was hadn't been talked about all day, and then people started to say, "What about the cattle?" And uh, and and they was ready to go, and so I said, "Go get them." And when I said, "Go get them," it was those horses went running off the hills and the flags. And the people, you know, like, got in like 300 cars. You look like a John up. Wayne movie meets V for Vendetta. I got to <laughs> say, I literally was in ecstasy because I was so worried about everybody getting shot and a war breaking out. And when the feds backed off, for now, I got really happy. And, and I, and I want to be friends with those feds. And I want them to become Americans again. And I think they did when they stood down. I, I think sanity prevailed. And I know they felt bad having to retreat, but Americans have been retreating in the face of the globalists for so long. We've been retreating. We're tired of getting pissed on. Uh, we're not going to do it no more. And those people were ready. And, uh, you know, I, I guess I have to take the blame or the credit, however you want to do. I did say go do it. And not, I didn't, we didn't order them to do it. Each individual had made that decision. And some stayed. I feel sorry for the ones that didn't go, but the ones that did went and faced those uh, that army with guns, and they went right up to their face, knowing they could get shot any second. And they went up there and they forced the United States government to get the hell out of our state. And they did. They left in a in a hurry. Well, if but what you've done was, is mm, go ahead. One thing that didn't get done: the sheriff still didn't do his job. He still got. He still has. A job, he still has a job to do. He should have took those guns as those guys run, but he didn't. Well, I want to talk about that now because it's so alien to people to hear you say, we don't want these armed BLM. It'd be one thing if they had a few armed police BLM for any type of you know crisis or, or, or problems that happened, and if they behave like police. But when they're in military outfits, and those guys are clearly military people. In fact, a lot of them look like mercenaries. They don't look like BLM. They look like real special forces operators. I know them when I see them on both sides. Uh, and when you see that and that they're ready to kill people, you know, fresh back from Afghanistan, you know, just 10 years ago, no one would put up with roving paramilitary federal police, more of them than there are people. And that bicyclist nearby that didn't stop and they shot him in the back a few weeks ago, and, and, and the aggressiveness of them, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we don't want roving federal goons. If the Austin Police Department acted like these people, I'd say disband the Austin Police Department. Well, sure. And let, let me uh, talk a little constitution here. We, the people, uh, have elected our county sheriff, and we give him part of our sovereignty uh, to... Uh, take care of some legal things and what he's supposed to take care of is he's supposed to take care of our life, liberty, and property. Now, that, that authority has never been given to any of those federal officers. If there's a problem, say down, on the park, down in the park, if there's a problem, they need to call the county sheriff and let them come and take care of it. They don't need to think they can take care of it. They, they're, they're, they're working as like a guest. They're, they're a... a, a like a Boy Scout, they're supposed to be helping people, serving people, and and being there for people, not to be carrying their guns and being this great authority. If there's a need, we every county 
in the United States. There's like 3,100 of them. Every county has a county sheriff, and that's why we elected him and paid him to take care of those problems. No, no, I hear you. I'm just so pro-gun, unless they totally disband the BLM. Out west, it's dangerous. You need guns. I mean, do you think the park rangers should be able to have guns then? No. Why do they need guns? I don't need a gun on my ranch. I go over all of the areas and play the park ranger. I've never needed a gun ever in my whole life. Neither has any of my cowboys. Not one of us ever needed a gun. If we needed a gun, we'd call the county sheriff. Say, hey, we need some help out here. That's what the park rangers should do. And that's what the BLM should do. And that's what the Fish and Wildlife should do. And that's what the uh, even the uh, FBI should do. They don't have no resting power or, or anything. If they have a problem, call the sheriff and have him take care of their problem. Help them with, help them with them. They're there to serve. Only to serve we the people, not to shoot us. Well, I know this. They claim that BLM only has 200 armed officers total. There's a major arms race in the federal government. And I looked at those guys they brought in, and I happen to know they use U.S. military on the border uh, in regular clothes because I've got family that has run operations on the border and in Mexico. And I'll guarantee you most of those so-called BLM guys that were out there were not even BLM. They were probably Joint Task Force 6 or 7 out of Texas. If I had to guess, those were U.S. Army. Uh, if that is the case, what do you say to that? That sounds pretty treasonous to me. Well, I don't see much difference in uh, uh, BLM than the United States Army coming after we, the people of America, and we, the people of the state of Nevada. Paramilitary is paramilitary. I know that both of us against the Constitution in the United States. One sense does any United States, uh, uh, any United States bureaucracy have a right to come against we, the people, or have arms? I don't see anything like that. They can carry arms as individuals, but when they're in their uniform and at their job, they should not have a gun with them. Only person at, 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 with a uniform and a and a, and a job would be our county sheriffs and their deputies. They're the only people that should be carrying guns here in America. Everybody else in America should carry a gun as a person. That's their first, their Second Amendment right. They should be able to carry a gun, but not as a as a uh, official servant of, of we the people, except the sheriff. Well, I hear you. The way they act, I mean, they just really acted like they hated in those videos of them tasering people and attacking. They acted like they really hated peaceful demonstrators. They, they look they like they wanted a war. They, I don't know as individually hate us, but they sure was standing there. And, you know, I feel sorry for those people, uh, their souls. I mean, gee whiz, you, you come against your own people, we the people, and you, you, you're threatened to shoot them. And, I mean, it come within a, a, a hair of being them, somebody pulling the trigger. Now, you got to remember, we the people was not armed. It was only the federal officers that was armed or whatever you want to call them. They were armed with heavy armor. Well, that's right. Most of the people did not have firearms that walked up to the line. That There were some militia people there that stayed up mainly on the embankment were aiming down. It was a very tense situation. Um, our reporters clearly heard it. You can hear it. It's hard on radio to pick it up on AM, but on the video that's gone viral of, of the feds retreating, you can hear them saying, you know, back up, back up, you know, you know, you know we will shoot. Uh, did you audibly yourself hear them say, we will shoot? I, You know, I wasn't there. I didn't personally uh, uh, hear that, uh, and I only have seen little clips on video. My wife and I stayed on that stage where we we talked and uh, uttered the flags. We stayed there through this whole operation. And so we, we just we started watching for the flag to come over the hill that we knew we somebody was successful. All the time we was there, BLM had an airplane that was flying in a circle around the encampment, and we could see that sure. airplane. Well, I saw some of your around. sons and daughters leading it, and 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 you know, you know, telling them no, we're not backing down, and then cutting open the gate. Which one of your sons was that that did that? You know, I had about three or four sons there, and uh, some daughters. I had some sisters there, and you know, there was like a thousand people there. A lot of those people on the horses were, uh, you know. Uh, cowboys, neighbors, and friends, and uh, I had uh, family and friends there, but there was many, many more people I didn't have no, no. But I'll tell you one thing. 
I shook hands with most every person there, and I hugged their women. And them people were good people. And one thing I understand, the, the, the souls of American people, and I think it's all the way around the world, there, there's a lot of good people. A lot, in fact, every soul is good. And I, I, you know, I realize that we need our individual rights to exercise agency. That's what I think our Constitution gave us. People. Absolutely. you got to have free will or you're not even conscious. You're not even a person. And they're you got to have private property and privacy to do that. Now, what about Ron Paul and others? Uh, there's been talk about you know Harry Reid saying we're not done yet. We played that clip earlier. Ron Paul had this to say. I want to get Clive Bundy's take on it. This is Ron Paul with Neil Cavuto last night. Well, I, I guess you can go either two ways. I'm hoping this is very positive of things to come where the people stand up and object to the federal government's intrusion into our lives and everything that we do. And when the people do get together and stand up, I think governments will be forced to back down. But the other thing is, is governments don't give up their power easily, and they may well come back with a lot more force like they did at, at Waco with the Davidians. So I don't know which way it's going, but so far, so good. I was delighted that uh, they got through those couple days and there wasn't any shooting and no killing because I really encourage, uh, you know, the demonstration against unfairness by our government, but I'd like to see it all nonviolent. And that weekend turned out so far to be a, a good step. But people are very angry, to your point, Congressman, right. and you hope it never comes to violence. or. To and then Judge Napolitano breaks down that you shouldn't have federal courts ruling over federal land disputes, and that it should be a state court that does that. I think that's a good point that, uh, that Judge Andrew Napolitano makes, uh, Mr. Bundy. Well, you know... Uh or Ron Paul, if he was our president of the United States, I don't believe this would ever happen to us. He would, he would have fought this war for us before this time. And so so I understand Ron Paul's place, and I wish, he would, I wish we wouldn't have to fight this war. But we do have to fight this war, war and we, we are ready, and we're, we're ready to do it. We're willing, and uh, we're actually excited about it. It's something that... When have we ever had this opportunity to fight for freedom like this? And, and those people that stood in that line, which I wasn't in that line, but those that stood in that line, you know, they, their souls was on the line. They, their lives are on the line. And their dedication to the, the freedom in this land was definitely sure demonstrated there. David Knight told me he's never experienced anything like it in his life. Same thing Josh Owens. It, it, it is really putting yourself on the line for true human freedom that opens up your heart, opens up your soul. It, it, it's what makes you more alive, and you cross those barriers. Every time I've risked my life covering a story or dealing with death threats or any of it, every time I just commit and go through the fear, uh, the world opens up, discernment opens up. You're right when you say it's spiritual, Clive. It is. Yeah, it, it definitely has to be a spiritual thing. Many people, well, not that many, but all people, and I think all people across the, uh, this world uh, are just, they're getting the opportunity with this modern media we have, all this technology we have, they're getting the opportunity to feel this, and I think that they will respond positively. Does your gut tell you uh, that the feds are coming back after you? Um, I mean, obviously they'll come back legally at you, but uh, what does your gut tell you? When, when Harry Reid, have you seen the video of him smiling with that demonic smile? <laughs> no, but uh, well, I did too. I actually seen that uh, somebody's made a uh, video in here, uh, and he's, they've got him. But no, I'm not afraid. I've, I've got right here in my hand, just uh, here for him. I don't know what to see, about four or five certified letters from the government. So I'm so sure their lawyers have been excited. I haven't even opened them. So yeah, no, I don't think uh, they're going to come after us soon. I think we, the public, are going to rally and continue on uh, uh, pushing forth to uh, de de harm these people. And encouraging our county sheriffs to uh, de-arm uh, United States bureaucracies. And there's a lot of bureaucracies, not just PLM and Park Service. I, I want to do five of. more minutes with the other side, then we'll let you go to talk specifically constitutionally about the role of the sheriff that Sheriff Mack talks about so much and other key points. So we'll put some bookends on this straight ahead with Cliven Bundy, uh, the uh, patriarch of what is probably going to become 
known as the flashpoint of the next American revolution. My gut tells me this is very important, just what happened. We'll be right back. Stay with us. We're on the...